Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to another video. Today I thought I would just give an update on my imprint collection. Um, I don't know whether this year I might just start going over certain labels that I have with a kind of updated collection video because I haven't done a kind of collection video for a while. Um, imprint is relatively new on the scene um, to me from Australia. I've generally perhaps went a little daft on them. Um, I know they are a little bit more expensive and um, they're cheaper if you get them from Australia but I know some people have had shipping issues. Um, certainly last year they did a sale they do kind of deals every now and again. Um, they perhaps don't print enough um, copies on the first release. They do standard releases without the slip covers. Um, so you do find a lot of people on eBay selling them. Um, my rule is if I see one that's a little cheaper I tend to pick them up. Um, but fortunately in the last couple of months announcements um, there hasn't been too many titles that I'm interested in. Um, I have slowed down somewhat. I'm never going to be complete um, as a numbered line. I'm never going to be complete honest. Um, but I'm just going to go through the titles that I do have. Um, some were really special because they're first time Blu-ray. Um, but it is noticeable that some of the titles um, that were exclusive at the time are now available on other boutique labels that are cheaper. Um, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, it will be interesting to see some of their kind of worldwide exclusives, how long they stay worldwide exclusives. So again, there's a lot of these that you can find my random reviews on the channel, so I'm not going to go into every single title in detail. I'm just going to attempt to go through the titles that I have, because again, the last time I did an imprint video, <coughs> I've got somewhat more titles since the last time. Um, there's maybe about half a dozen I've still to watch that are still in the backlog, but again, I'll point them out when I'm going through them. Um, you can leave comments to which your favourite imprint titles and which imprint um, releases that I don't have that I should pick up. So without further notice, um, I'll start with number 7, which is No Way to Treat a Lady, with Rod Steiger, Lee Remick and George Siegel. Um, this is a wonderful earlier serial killer film from 1968. If you don't know um, imprint, they do have the date at the top and the spine number at the bottom. They don't have booklets um, but they just have alternate artwork and an internal um, artwork. Very much like Kino for example you'll get um, some that just have a trailer and a commentary um, and other ones that have that are kind of more loaded with extras. So, for example, this one has a commentary by Cat Ellinger, um, which is fantastic because it's Cat Ellinger, um, and it's just a 1080 presentation of the film. So this one only has um, a commentary. But it's a really enjoyable film, with as always a really subtle Rod Steiger performance. There will be at some point during this video that I will. Um, knock one of these piles over. Um, number 12 is Mario Bava's Mario Bava. Um, it's a wonderful danger diabolique. Another thing I like about imprint is such colourful boxes. Um, so for example this one has 
two commentaries, a video essay, a 2005 featurette, and the Beastie Boys music video Body Moving, which is based on Danger Diabolique. And again, nice alternate artwork. So that's number 12, Danger Diabolique. Number 13 is Day of the Locust. This is an incredible film. Again, this one I've done a random review of um, about Hollywood in the 30s. It has an unbelievable ending. Um, it's a brutal film, bizarre film, um, but it's absolutely fantastic. Um, again, this is a 1080. There's um actor interview, William Atherton, there's an interview with Kim Newman, so Kim Newman and Kat Ellinger, Kevin Lyons, they do a lot of work um, for Imprint, and this has a commentary by Kat Ellinger as well. This is one of the best films um, in the line, um, Karen Black, it's just so bizarre um, and so wonderful. You could watch this in a double bill with Mulholland Drive as far as kind of alternate takes on the Hollywood dream. Uh, number 15 is David Mamet's The Winslow Boy, which is a lovely little film, Nigel Hawthorne. Um, so this one's got a commentary with Mamet and David Mamet's commentaries are always really good as far as about screenwriting, about directing. Um, and Jeremy Northam, Nigel Hawthorne and Rebecca Pidgeon are also in that commentary. There's a making of featurette and a theatrical trailer. Um, that's the alternate artwork. Being a Mammoth fan, I kind of had to pick that up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, number 16 and number 17 is the Bob Hope collection, the Ghost Breakers and the Cat and the Canary. Now Eureka recently released this on Region B. Um, again, their nice little box sets are quite. Their boxes are lovely. Again, with a lovely colour scheme because that's what it's all about. So it's the Ghost Breakers and the Cat and the Canary. Um, this has a commentary of Stephen Jones and Kim Newman. Um, this has a commentary of Stephen Jones and Kim Newman and a radio version. Um, featuring Bob Hope. So they do a good line of cardboard if you're collecting films for the cardboard boxes. So that's 16 and 17. Uh, number 25 is At Close Range, one of my favourites which I have on a couple of versions. Um, Alton artwork. Top class Christopher Walken Action. This one has um, different special features. Um, I did a boutique label battle with this in the Twilight Time release. Um, and this has um, some new extras. There's a commentary from 2015 with James Foley and Nick Redman. It's an interview with James Foley from 2018. Um, there's a interview with a journalist about the true story from 2020. And there's an interview with a composer from 2020 and there's a short feature eight on the geographic locations where the true story happened. It's isolated score and trailer. So that's at close range, which is number 25. Number 27 is Rage with Glenn Ford and Stella Stevens. Probably my favourite rabies film. Um, I did a random review on this. This has got a commentary and a visual essay by Kat Ellinger on Stella Stevens, which is fantastic. So that's number 27. Uh, number 28 is The Deep, which is available on 101 Films, um, which has pretty much um, similar extras. Uh, there's extra selected scenes from the three hour special edition. This one's two hours and four minutes. And there's a commentary by Ileana Douglas from 2020. 
But this is wonderful Robert Shaw stuff. So that's the deep, number 28. Number 31 is The Bad News Bears. The sequel is also on imprint with William Devane, but I'm probably not going to pick that up. Um, this is just Walter Matthau wonderfulness. And again, lovely lurid orangey yellow colour. This one just has a trailer and a commentary by Scott Harrison. That's the Bad News Bears, number 31. Number 32, Robert Duvall stars in and directs The Apostle, which is rather fabulous. Um, <coughs> that's the alternate cover. Duvall is just wonderful in it. Um, and this one has a lot of <coughs> extras. This has got a commentary by Duvall, <coughs> an interview with John Beasley. Again, one of those guys that you'll recognise the face, if not the name, from 2020. An interview with the composer from 2020. A visual essay by Ian Mantagni from 2020. Um, a featurette. And there's a, vint a, a vintage featurette about the music um, featured in the film. So that's The Apostle, number 32, which I would highly recommend. Uh, number 33 is 5 which is a wonderful little post-apocalyptic film where only four men and one woman survive um, a nuclear bomb. This one's from 1951. This has a commentary uh, by Glenn Erickson and Matthew Rovner and Kim Newman on the film's director, um, Arch Obler. It's a really nice, low-budget little film um, where all you need is five people to make a dramatic story. Uh, number 34 is Black Sunday, along with Two Minute Warning. Um, make a wonderful double bill about disasters at the Super Bowl. This is from 1977. Again, another wonderful Robert Shaw performance. Bruce Dern. It's fantastic in it as well. Um, this has a commentary by Stephen Prince, an interview with film historian about the John Williams score, and there's a featurette about the director John Frankenheimer from 2020. Number 35 is Let It Ride with Richard Dreyfuss um, from 1989 with Meg Tilly, who plays a degenerate gambler. Not a particularly nice character, um, but it's a fun little film. Again, there's a commentary with Scott Harrison from 2020, um, and there's an interview with director Joe Peitzka from 2020, deleted scenes, and a trailer. So that's number 35. Number 37 is Scarface, you know, Howard Hawks, 1932. This is available in the premium collection, um, but this one does have... Um, different extras in the premium collection and I think this one is the better release again I am not paid by imprint um, this has got a commentary with Drew Casper on the theatrical version there's a video interview with Matthew Sweet the wonderful Matthew Sweet who does a lot of work for Studio Canal there's an interview with Tony Raines a trailer and we get the theatrical version of the film the alternate censored version of the film an introduction by TCM Classic Movies host and film historian Robert Osborne, an alternate ending, and the trailer. So if you love Scarface, I would certainly pick this one up. Uh, number 38, The Two Worlds of Jenny Logan. This is a perfect example of a film that I necessarily wouldn't pick up otherwise, but you can still get this for like 18 quid. On eBay, for some reason, this one is always really cheap, comparative to the RRP price of imprints. And this is a TV movie about a woman who, strangely enough, ends up in two separate um, 
Times, um, starring Lindsay Wagner and um, Beastmaster himself, Mark Singer. Um, this one has a commentary by Kevin Lyons, who always does good work. He's usually partnered with um, Jonathan Rigby, but he gets to do a commentary all by himself for the two worlds of Jenny Logan. Number 39 is The Mothman Prophecies with Richard Gere, which is a lovely little film about strange going on, allegedly based on a true story. Um, and this one is absolutely stacked um, with special features. There's a commentary by director Mark Pellington. There's an interview from 2020 with Pellington. There's an interview with the editor, the composer, the production designer, there's a making of, um, there's a music video, there's deleted scenes, there's a real life documentary about searching for the Mothman. Um, and there is a fascinating two part director's journey um, about the making of the film, which is absolutely riveting. So this one is absolutely stacked. Um, Number 42 is The Wonderful President's Analyst. It's not perfect, um, but it's a lot of fun with James Coburn. And again, lovely alternate artwork. Um, this has a commentary with Tim Lucas and a little chat with Kim Newman. Again, such vivid colours. So that's number 42. Number 44 is another gem. This is Peter Lorre, the face behind the mask. This proves that in, what is it, 68 minutes, you can make a film that's absolutely wonderful. It doesn't need to be three hours long. Um, again, I've done a random review of this one. This is one of my favourite imprint releases as well. This is just sensationally good. There's a commentary by Alan K. Road, who does lots of film noir stuff especially for Kino um, and there's a fascinating conversation with Rode about Peter Lorre and his career and kind of the sad twists and turns of his career and Kim Newman also talks about it so this is another one that I would highly recommend picking up if that floats your boat. Number 49 is the imprint releases that pretty much started me in imprint um, it's one of my favourite films from the 70s. I think it's so underrated and neglected. But again, hopefully this release of it changes that. And that's The Gambler by Carl Rice with um, James Caan and what I think is his best performance ever. Lovely orange box. There's the alternate cover. I have not seen the Mark Wahlberg remake and I have no intention of seeing the Mark Wahlberg remake. This one is just so good. Um, there's a commentary by critic Matthew Asprey Gear. There's a video essay by Chris O'Neill, again, who does a lot of work for imprint and visual essays. Um, there's an interview um, about the music, an interview assistant editor, and there's an archival interview with Carol Rice about his career. It's just a sensational film. Um, and one of those Blu-ray releases that's almost like Holy Grail. I'm so glad that this finally got a Blu-ray release. So that's 49 in The Gambler. Um, this is one of the box sets. They're always doing really nice box sets again with really nice cardboard. Um, this is 50, 51 and 52 and 53. This is The Hammer Horror. Now all of these are available by other companies separately. Uh, but again, it's, it's a lovely bit of cardboard. And again, nice sturdy big box. So we get Vampire Circus, which has recently been released elsewhere. Um, Twins of Evil, which is available on Network. Hands of the Ripper, which is available on Network. And Countess Dracula, which is available. I just can't think of where but I have to say the extras on these releases are ridiculous so even though um, 
these films are available elsewhere if you are right into Hammer the extras in this set are spectacular um, and again lovely cardboard and then 54, 55 and 56 is Silver Screams Cinema again this is a lovely uh, box set this has a bunch of films um, The Unknown Terror, She Devil, Return of the Eight Man, Valley of the Zombies The Vampire's Ghosts and The Phantom Speaks did a random review of The Vampire's Ghosts such an unusual but sensational um, different take on vampirism and yeah, this comes in three cases. Again, we're just with different artwork for each film. And again, the extras. There's commentaries with Stephen Jones, Kim Newman. Um, there's radio episodes. Um, just a whole bunch of wonderful stuff. Um, commentaries by Todd Weaver, Gary Rhodes, Steve Cronenberg with a K. And again, commentary with Tim Lucas, commentaries by Stephen Jones and um, Kim Newman. And you also get the bonus film, The Lady and the Monster. So There's actually an uncredited film um, which you get as a bonus. So again, just a fascinating little set um, from Paramount, who didn't do a lot of horror films around that period um, but these are some of them and it's just great having these films actually on blu-ray in high definition um, films that generally would be forgotten about so that's 54, 55 and 56 57 is Brotherhood of Satan which again recently got a um, Arrow release this is a wonderful little film, strangely enough, about a brotherhood of Satan worshippers. Um, this is a commentary with Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson. Um, it's got an interview with film historian John Humphreys and Kim Newman talks about it. Just so enjoyable. Um, next, number 58 is Haunted. Which is a nice little ghost story um, with Aidan Quinn and Kate Beckinsale. I wouldn't say it's spectacular, but it's solid. But again, this one has um, two aspect ratios of the film. There's a commentary by Kim Newman and Stephen Jones, an interview with cinematographer, an interview with actor Alex Lowe, an interview with composer, and there's a vintage making of. So that's Haunted at 58. 60, a film that I obviously had to get even though I have it elsewhere in different editions. The Dead Zone, which of course is available in Scream Factory um, and various other places. But there are new extras if you're as sad as I am. Um, top class Christopher Walken performance, of course, and wonderful Cronenberg film. Um, there's a commentary of Stephen Jones and Kim Newman. Um, there's an interview with um, the cinematographer Mark Irwin and production designer from 2021. There's an interview with Edward Sherman discussing Michael Kamen's score from 2021. There's a documentary about the film from 2021. Um, well, it's about actually adapting Stephen King and Dino De Laurentiis. There's a visual essay by Lee Gambin from 2021. And there's the featurettes which appear in other releases. And there's 83 vintage interviews with Cronenberg, Deborah Hill and Martin Sheen. And there's an interview with Stephen King and a trailer. So if you love The Dead Zone, this does have different bonus materials than uh, the Scream Factory edition. Or I did have it in German Blu-ray at one point. Um, number 61, again, this was one of those films that was so glad to see in the imprint collection. Even though I did have a Spanish Blu-ray. Um, even though it was one of those that you couldn't get rid of the subtitles you had to move them off the screen it's David Lynch's The Straight Story one of the few David Lynch films 
that isn't in the Criterion or doesn't have a, um, a US release, I don't believe, I could be wrong obviously. Um, this is absolutely wonderful. Great score by Angelo Badalamenti, a different score from Angelo Badalamenti who is sadly no longer with us as we know. Um, this is restored from a 4K Masters, a commentary um, by Peter Tonget from 2021. Um, there's a feature with the Minneapolis crew which is lovely. Um, straight and Narrow, there's a featurette from 2021, Far and Wide Inside the Score from 2021, um, and Found Highway, The Lynchian Redemption of the Straight Story, a visual essay by Ian Mantagni from 2021, and the trailer. So that's another absolutely wonderful release, which at the moment I don't believe has a other worldwide release on Blu-ray. Um, 63 is Chinese Box, which is a nice little film with Jeremy Irons and Ang Lee, sorry, not Ang Lee, um, it's Wayne Wang and Gong Lee. Again, you can watch it um, with M. Butterfly as a nice um, double bill with Jeremy Irons. There's a commentary by Wayne Wang and critic Roger Garcia and there's a documentary by Wayne Wang and there's also a featurette about the score. So that's number 63. That's another one of these ones that I got a lot cheaper than the RRP. Number 64, Drugstore Cowboy um, with Gus Van Sant, which I... Um, there's a random review of this as well from 1989 um, Matt Dillon Kelly Lynch this is a nice little film about um, drug addiction um, there's a commentary of Gus Van Sant and Matt Dillon there's a making of documentary from 1999 there's a visual essay by Chris O'Neill from 2021 um, a featurette a couple of featurettes from 2021 and the trailer that's Drugstore Cowboy. Number 66, which has actually just recently got a 4K release, which I won't be picking up. Um, Double Jeopardy, which is a fun little thriller with Tommy Lee Jones and Ashley Judd from 1999. There's a reversible artwork. A different artwork, sorry. Um, there's a commentary by Scott Harrison and a making of in a trailer. Again, this is another one that I got somewhat cheaper than the usual. Um, next from 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74 is the wonderful collaborations Zhang Zhmu and Gong Li which I did a video on. Um, this one is pretty spectacular. It's eight films um, and a booklet Granted that imprint booklets are not perhaps up to the standard of other labels booklets, but it's nice to have them anyway. Um, so you have Red Sorghum, Judo, Raise the Red Lantern, The Story of Kiju, which is the greatest film about a woman's search for justice after her husband is kicked in the nuts. To Live, Shanghai Triad, Curse of the Golden Flower, and Coming Home. Again, all of these, the batting average in these films is really pretty high. Um, and the cinematography is absolutely spectacular. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful um, group of films um, and quite a fantastic um, set. Top class cardboard all round um, and just beautiful um, releases and top class extras. Lots of Tony Rains giving you brief descriptions of the times 
but obviously with Tony Rains, those brief descriptions of the times take 45 minutes. But there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just a wonderful set. So that's collaborations. Um, next, 75, 76 and 77. Um, the Harry Palmer trilogy. So this is Ibcris File, Funeral in Berlin and Billion Dollar Brain. Again, nice little box. So the Ipcris File, which is available on network. But again, this one has a vegetable ton of extras. Commentaries with the director, commentaries from 2020 with Troy Howarth, um, an interview with Michael Caine for 2006, an interview with production designer Ken Adam for 2006, location report from 2021, an interview with second assistant director from 2021, an interview with assistant production accountant. That's really um, scraping the bottom of the barrel if you're interviewing accountants from 2021. No offence to accountants, obviously. Um, Funeral in Berlin. This one just has a commentary, interview with the editor, interview with Len Dayton from 1983, um, a 1969 television documentary with Michael Caine, and a 1994 documentary about Michael Caine. And then Billion Dollar Brain, lovely pink, um, which has a commentary with Vic Pratt and Will Fowler, an interview um, with Rob Mallows of the Dayton Dossier from 2021, an interview with Cinematographer 2021, an interview with Associate Editor from 2021, um, and an excerpt of Michael Caine discussing the British film industry from 1969, which is actually really um, quite fascinating. So that's the Harry Palmer collection. Um, I think... Um, all those films are available elsewhere. I yeah, know Network has the Ipcress file. Um, next, number 82 and 83 is the Browning version. And the Browning version, which is a lovely set with Michael Redgrave and Albert Finney. Based on the play. So that is the 1940, sorry, 1951 edition. And that's the Mike Figgis 1994 edition. And again, wonderful um, extras. There's a commentary with um, Joe Bottling and Melanie Williams and Matthew Sweet on both versions. Um, even though, interestingly enough, the Matthew Sweet um, is on the first film, which you would think you would watch first. Whereas it really should be on the second film after you've watched both films. So don't watch that extra with Matthew Sweet until you've watched both. Um, and he goes into also the differences and the updating of the story. There's a commentary on the Figgis version with Peter Tunguet. There's an audio interview with Albert Finney, biographer from 2021. And there's an interview with the composer, Mark Isham. And there's an interview with Matthew Modine, who's always interesting. And there's a Guardian Archival interview with Mike Figgis from 1997. So two lovely but slightly different films. Um, personally, I prefer the original. But there is no wrong with Albert Finney. Number 85 is Ned Kelly. Again, this one I picked up ridiculously cheaply. The alternate artwork, um, and this one just has a commentary um, and a featurette from 2021 called Shooting a Rolling Stone. So that's number 85. 86 is an absolute gem the Assassination Bureau Limited um, with Oliver Reed and Diana Rigg, um, Telly Savalas, um, about a company. Strange enough, that specialises in murdering people. Um, I mean, the artwork's absolutely fantastic. This is a commentary by Kevin Lyons. Kim Newman talks about it in Cat Ellinger with a wonderful visual essay 
on Diana Rigg. So that's number 86. Tremendous, tremendous fun. Um, number 87 is Let's Scare Jessica to Death. A very strange, dreamlike, um, psychological... Is it a horror film? Not quite sure, but it's kind of strange and wonderful. This one has three commentaries. Commentary with director John Hancock, a commentary with Kat Ellinger, and there's a commentary with Kim Newman. There's an interview with the composer, there's an interview with Kim Newman, um, there's a featurette on the locations, a trailer, TV and radio spots, and a film gallery. Next we have number 88, Tam Lin, which BFI recently released in Blu-ray. I could be wrong, I think it was BFI. Um, this is a strange little film with Ava Gardner and Ian McShane. But again, the extras on it are fairly um, substantial. There's two commentaries, visual essay by Kat Ellinger. Um, of course, I should say this was directed by Roddy McDowell, bizarrely. Um, Roddy McDowell remembers Ava Gardner. Ian McShane is an interview. Stephanie Be Beecham is an interview. Um, and there's other interviews, including David Duval, who's a Roddy McDowell um, biographer. So that's Tam Lynn. Again, I think it's BFI that it's available on. Uh, next, Body Parts with Jeff Fay, which is a wonderful little thriller. Again, I did a um, random review on about a man who has an accident and has his body parts replaced, or has a leg replaced, obviously. Um, something nefarious happens. Um, directed by Eric Red, who wrote some stuff for Catherine Bigelow, of course. Um, there's a commentary by Lee Gambon, commentary by Eric Red. There's an interview with Eric Red, interview with the editor, a couple of actors, and there's a deleted footage with a commentary by Red. Just lots of fun. Number 91. Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon. Again, this is a lot of fun as well. About a man who goes under hypnosis but then sees something. Um, a commentary by writer-director David Gipp. Um, there's an interview with David Gipp. Um, there's interviews with actresses, production designers, there's featurettes, interviews. Lots of fun stuff for a fun little film. 92, The Wonderful Medusa Touch, Richard Burton, Lee Remick and Lino Ventura. Um, this is available on network. It's just absolutely so much fun. Um, this got a commentary with director Jack Golden, Kim Newman and Stephen Jones. And there's a new commentary with Lee Gambin and Kat Ellinger from 2021. There's a visual essay from 2021, interview with Peter Mullins from 2021. So this does have different extras than the Network Edition. And me being sad, I'm going to keep the Network Edition as well. That's 1992. Sorry, 92. I haven't quite got to number um, 1992. Who knows, they'll get there eventually. Um, number 93 is The Possession of Joel Delaney with Shirley MacLaine. Which again is a strange little film about mental health um, and possession, which probably includes scenes you couldn't get away with nowadays. Um, this is a commentary Lee Gambin. There's a visual essay from 2021 about the fashions of the film. There's a visual essay um, with film historian Chris O'Neill. And there's an interview with Perry King, who plays Joel Delaney. And there's a documentary from 1994 about Shirley MacLaine. So that's quite wonderful at 93. 94 is another one of my favourite films of all time that for years didn't have a Blu-ray release and then two came along in short um, succession. I did do a boutique label battle featuring the Criterion and the imprint. And that's the Parallax View. Again, just one of the most underrated 70s films, but for me, it's one of the best, starring Warren Beatty. 
um, and this one does have slightly different extras in the criterion as well. It's a 4K restoration, um, there's a commentary by Kevin Lyons, there's a commentary by Blake Howard, Kim Newman talks about the Parallax View and Conspiracy Thrillers, Matthew Sweet talks about the Parallax View, and there's a visual essay by Chris O'Neill. This is one of the best inter um, imprint releases, and if you obviously like the film, I would highly recommend double dipping and getting the Criterion and the imprint. Again, I am not paid by imprint. Um, number 95, Ida Lupino directed Outrage, um, which is a wonderful film about a young girl who is um, raped. Um, this has a commentary by Alexandra Heller Nicholas. Unfortunately, that's the only extra. Um, but it's a really good little film, which I'm surprised they actually made it or were allowed to make it. Um, number 96 is The Naked Jungle. This is just a hysterical film, not as in laughing at it, but just hysterical as in up to 11 with um, Charlton Heston against ants. Even though it takes a while for the ants to get there. Um, but when they do, my goodness. Those little bleeders are everywhere. Um, this has three commentaries. Um, one by Barry Forshaw, Kim Newman, one by Lee Pfeiffer and Paul Scrabo. And a commentary by George Powell, biographer Justin Humphreys and C. Courtney Joyner. There's a documentary on Charlton Heston. And there's three radio Adaptations, one um, with Charlton Heston and Donna Reed, and another one with William Conrad, and a trailer. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. Again, another film that probably wouldn't get made nowadays. Um, number ninety seven, The Country Girl, with Bing Crosby, Grace Kelly, and William Holden. Um, if you go over to friend of the channel Chris Mohan, I think he did a. One of his watch lists was The Country Girl, so go check that out. Um, this is a wonderful little film. Um, there's a commentary from 2021. There's a documentary about Grace Kelly um, and a trailer. Um, Bing Crosby is a past his best alcoholic actor. He's trying to get one more chance in the theatre with William Holden. And Grace Kelly is his wife. It's a really wonderful little film. Number 98, I did a random review of this, just a bizarre kind of spy adventure film from 1968, House of Cards with George Pippard, um, Inger Stevens, and Orson Welles. Uh, Orson Welles is a fascist. This is a commentary of Scott Harrison, a theatrical trailer, an isolated music and effects track. So not a lot on the extras side, but by Jingo. It's entertaining nonsense. And again, just lovely bright colours. Number 99. Again, this one I was intrigued by Chris Mohan, so it's his fault. Olivia de Havilland and Lady in a Cage. Um, she was caged in a nightmare of greed, bestiality and murder. Um, this is from 1964. Another film that they probably wouldn't make nowadays. Because this is actually quite brittle. In places, quite shocking in places from 1964. Um, there's a commentary by Kim Newman and Barry Forshaw, there's a commentary by Kat Ellinger and a visual essay by Chris O'Neill. What more do you need? Lady in a Cage. That's number 99. Number 101, Last Train from Gunnell, Kurt Douglas and Anthony Quinn. Just a lovely um, western. It looks absolutely stunning. Um, there's a commentary by Stephen Prince and Leonard Matlin, or Maitland, sorry, talks about Last Train from Gun Hill. Number 104 and 105 is the Odd Couple collection with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. So this has the Odd Couple, the Odd Couple 2, and then it has, I think, 10 episodes of the TV show um, with Quincy himself. So there's Odd Couple, tons of extras, The Odd Couple 2, and the TV show. 
As this video is running on and on and on and on and on, I might not go through extras the rest of the way because uh, at some point you have to go to bed. So that's the odd couple. 108 is Lemon again in the Out of Towners. I do love um, some Jack Lemon. It's the Out of Towners, which I believe was remade at some point from 1970. Number 109 is the two different versions of the Austin Weekend. They have done um, two versions of um, The Killer Elite with James Cann as well. Peck and Pa's final film. Not that you could tell, he was probably a little bit inebriated when he made it. Um, Rutger Hauer and Burt Lancaster. Fascinating but flawed. That's the Austin Weekend. Um, 110 is The Hunter with Steve McQueen. Which again looks like a TV movie. Um, flawed but interesting. Number 112, Conquest of Space. Which is definitely flawed but fun. One thirteen, marooned. I like how imprints sometimes have like themed little runs. This is Gregory Peck from nineteen sixty nine. Um, James Franciscus, David Jansen, Richard Crenna, Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman with a performance. M114, Audrey Rose, which I believe has just been released by Arrow. Again, if you pause the video really quickly, you'll be able to see the extras, whether you'll be able to read them. That's a completely different story. M115, another spectacular release, Johnny Got His Gun. Um, if you're a Metallica fan, you'll recognise bits of the film from the one video. Um, it's just a wonderful anti-war film, um, which includes Donald Sutherland as Jesus. But it's just sensationally good. Timothy Bottoms as a poor soldier who gets his arms, legs, face, um, hearing, sight. I'm assuming his sense of smell blown off. So that's 115. Don't worry, just two stacks left. Uh, 117, Cutter's Way, which just has a release via Radiance um, on another label, which I seem to have just immediately forgotten. Um, this is 1981, even though it really feels like a 70s film with Jeff Bridges um, and John Heard. About a mystery that might not be a mystery. Fantasy and reality. 117, 118 is the counterfeit traitor, counterfeit traitor, and um, with William Holden. It's a lot of fun, even if it's a little bit over long. About espionage in World War Two. 118, 119 is The Godfather, I mean, sorry, The Brotherhood um, from 1968 with Kirk Douglas um, about a man whose brother comes back from the war who's in the Mafia um, and ends up taking control and being involved in betrayal and yeah, it's quite a bit like The Godfather but four years earlier than The Godfather film, certainly. Um, I'm not exactly sure when the Puzo book came out. Um, it's a nice meat and potatoes film, perhaps a little dry, but Kirk Douglas does Kirk Douglas things in it. Number 120, Across 110th Street, again I think this is available in Kino Lorber, um, brilliant Yafit Koto, Anthony Quinn, about a bunch of guys who rob the Mafia, obviously 
towards them. What's the word? Um, retribution to be paid. Um, great soundtrack, of course. One two one. The Dawn is Dead with Robert Foster and Anthony Quinn. Um, really violent mafia film. It's apparently based on fact. Pretty violent and sometimes goes in places that you don't necessarily expect it to go. Man on a Swing, 122, which is a strange little film. Um, about police involvement with a psychic. With Frank Perry, who did The Swimmer, um, Cliff Robertson and Joel Grey. Again, doesn't necessarily go in places that you either want or as an audience expect. Number 123, The Walter Hill Warriors. Now they have teased a Walter Hill box set. We still don't know when it's coming. Two cuts of the film. Um, loads of extras of the film. But again, obviously The Warriors is available in different places as well. One of the highlights, the Neo Noir Volume 1. I'm not going to take them all out for time. Um, but enter... After Dark My Sweet, Mortal Thoughts, Rush, Flesh and Bone and Twilight. I've done some random reviews on a couple of these. But the highlight is One False Move, the Carol Franklin masterpiece from the early 90s. Um, it finally got a Blu-ray release and it's absolutely wonderful. It's worth buying the set just for One False Move with Bill Paxton. Um, absolutely lovely set. The Contender, 130. Nice little political thrill about a woman becoming vice president. Yes, it's perhaps a little bit too fond of itself and um, politically correct in the end. Um, and you could say it's kind of naive in points. But it's well made and well acted. Um, Gary Oldman, Jeff Bridges, Joan Allen, Christian Slater. 131 is Bloody Sunday, which I haven't watched yet. Again, I picked this up really cheaply. We all know that what that's about. Um, Paul Greengrass. Again, lots of extras on that release. Um, 132, Barabbas. Anthony Quinn as one of the people that were... Sorry, as the person who was let go. Um amongst the the Christ crucifixions. Um, rather silly, but somehow enjoyable. Directed by Richard Fleischer, who, strange laugh, I do have quite a lot of these Richard Fleischer films. But that's Barabbas. Again, that was another cheaper pickup. The fairly bizarre Charlton Heston, Julius Caesar from one th spine number 133. This is Charlton Heston, Jason Robards, John Gilgood, Richard Johnson, Robert Vaughan, Richard Chamberlain, Diana Rigg, Christopher Lee, Jill Bennett. Um, this is quite strange. But also kind of fascinating. Um, 134 is the Nelson Affair. With a stupendous performance by Glenda Jackson, Peter Finch. Wonderful performances. Next, continuing the theme, 136 is Damn the Defiant by Alec Guinness and Dirk Bogart and Anthony Quayle. It's funny because Anthony Quayle is pretty much just playing um, a random seaman, but of course he still plays him with the voice of Anthony Quayle. You know, he's supposed to be like riff raff, but he still does it in the Anthony Quayle voice. I mean, it's complete nonsense, but it's just so enjoyable for a Sunday afternoon. Um, so that's 136 from 1962, directed by Lewis Gilbert. 
137, continuing a theme. Uh, the long ships. Now this is complete nonsense, but really enjoyable. From 1964, um, Richard Widmark, Sidney Poitier, I mean, as a villain, which you don't see very often. Um, Russ Tamblin, an international cast directed by Jack Cardiff. I mean, again, this has Sunday afternoon written all over it. Um, it's just completely barking and nonsense, but it's kind of wonderful. The bizarre torture device that Sidney Poitier has is... It's basically like a slide, but it splits things that shouldn't be split. Again, this was another um, release that just put a smile on my face because it's the worldwide exclusive. I don't think it's been released since by any other company. One of my favourite films in the 90s, so underrated. Um, the Music of Chance. Just absolutely love this film. Did a random review, directed by Philip Haas, um, Mandy Padankin, and James Bader. Um, this and Crash are two seminal James Bader um, films. But highly recommend The Music of Chance. It's just so good. Again, I did a random review of it. Um, 143. The Beast, really underrated um, Kevin Reynolds, The Prince of Thieves in Waterworld. Um, and this has got commentary, but it does have a feature length documentary, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, you could argue that Imprint has turned into the Jason Patrick label. Um, but really wonderful film about Russian tank soldiers in Afghanistan. Um, 144. Things to do in Denver when you're dead. Again, you could be um, cynical and say it was a Tarantino ripoff, but it was actually written before Tarantino, but just got made because of the success of Tarantino. Um, I really have this for Christopher Walken, but Treat Williams is wonderful in it. It's so, it's kind of so self-aware and mannered that some people perhaps don't like it. Um, but it's a good little film. Um, and again, for me, it's... It's more walking. 152, Love the Little Noir, The Scarlet Hour. Um, just so good, directed by Michael Curtis from 1956. No stars, just talent. Uh, 158, There's Uazala by Kurosawa. Yes, it's a running joke on the channel, um, but Kurosawa after Mifune series is coming at some point. I think that'll almost be a year since I announced that, but it is coming at some point. This is a wonderful 1975 film made in Russia. I'm looking forward. Well, I've already had a sneak peek and it does look beautiful and blurry, as it should. Um, 159, the special edition of Barfly with Mickey Rourke. Um, this has the film, strangely enough. And the Charles Bukowski tapes, which is four hours long, which I will admit I have not watched. Um, I will watch at some point. Honest. So that is Barfly at 159. One sixty is Zhang Zhu's Road Home. Perhaps not as good as the films in the box set, collaborations box set, but still a lovely little film. One six one Blue Chips with Nick Noti and Shaq and the wonderful JT Walsh about corrupt um, college basketball as if any of that's true of course um, you know I'm not sure if this is based on a true story or just probably is true um, 162 the Jeremy Irons Jonathan Lynn version of Lolita it's 
it's another good um, Jeremy Irons performance. Frank Langella in the role um, that Peter Sellers played. 163 is Harem with Natasha Kinski and Ben Kingsley, another film that wouldn't be made nowadays by Arthur Joffe. That's 163. 170 is Testament, which I did a random review of. A wonderful post apocalyptic um, feel good movie with an early performance um, by Kevin Costner, but a wonderful performance by Jane Alexander from 1983. Again, another one of these um, Holy Grail films for me, finally getting a Blu ray release. Um, Save the Tiger with Jack Lemmon, which again I did a random review of. Uh, this is from 1973, another really underrated 70s film. With a great performance by Jack Lemmon. 172 is The Molly Maguires with Sean Connery, who doesn't actually speak for about half an hour. Um, Richard Harris about um, miners who sabotage. That's as far as we'll go with the plot, just in case you haven't seen it. But this is a wonderful film as well, um, directed by Martin Ritt from 1970. Again, another Holy Grail film for me, um, arguably my famous, my favourite sports film. Again, I did a random review of this one, North Dallas 40. For me, Nick Nolte's best performance as an ageing receiver on a fictional um, Dallas uh, football team that's definitely not the Dallas Cowboys. Even though G.D. Spradlin does a wonderful Tom Landry impersonation, even though it's not Todd, uh, Tom Landry, obviously. And it does contain a wonderful John Matuzak, the Two's performance, um, way better than the Goonies. Uh, 174 Pretty Baby by Louis Mal with Brooke Shields. Probably another film they wouldn't make nowadays. I've still to watch this one. Um, Keith Carradine, Susan Sarandon from 1978. I haven't seen this one yet either. This is 175 Comeback Little Sheba with Burt Lancaster. Again, these ones, um, these later titles, some of them were in bundles, the monthly order, which again sometimes works out cheaper, but don't you're not always interested in all the titles. But this was the bundle that had Save the Tiger and North Dallas Fort in them. Uh, 176, another one I haven't watched yet. Again, this is another Burt Lancaster, The Rose Tattoo, both Hal, Hal Wallace. Um, Productions. Um, this is from 1955. 177 is Warning Shot with David Jansen, which is a fun little uh, film about a cop shooting with the um, not the most charismatic actor in the world, Richard Jansen. Um, But this is an enjoyable little film. Again, looks a little bit more than like a TV film, um, but still interesting. Um, and then After Dark, Neo Noir Volume 2. Um, I've still to watch a couple of these, but I will say this isn't as good as Volume 1, but again, that's just um, personal taste, obviously. Um, so in this set, again you get a booklet, glossy and shiny, again you get a wonderful cardboard box. So this has NARC, another Jason Patrick film with Ray Liotta, which is a lovely little film. Um, the Yards, which I have yet to watch. 
about these Blu-rays. Um, Way of the Gun, written and directed by Christopher McQuarrie, who wrote The Usual Suspects. Um, this has a lot to like in it, and a lot that's quite annoying and self-aware. Um, and you can tell it's a writer trying to show off his, write, his dialogue and writing skills. Obviously it's a film that actors love because they get to talk a lot. Uh, the Crimson Rivers, which I saw a long time ago, but I've still to watch this um, imprint release. And that has a boatload of extras. I think there's two cuts of the film. Internal Affairs, not Infernal Affairs. This is Andy Garcia, Richard Gere. Richard Gere is Bad Lieutenant, essentially. Um, this is Mike Figgis. It's nonsense, but it's kind of enjoyable nonsense. And Jamie Lee Curtis in Blue Steel, Catherine Bigelow. Again, this one is interesting, but gets obviously quite silly at the end. Um, but it's still enjoyable. So, I mean, for me, this set isn't as good as the Volume 1, but it's still got enjoyable films. I wouldn't necessarily say any of them are truly great films. And then finally... You'll be glad to know, those of you who are still awake. Um, Spine number 191, Distant Thunder, um, with John Lithgow and Ralph Macchio. These are, this is another one of these veterans coming back from Vietnam. This one, it's been 10 years since he's come back. And he lives out in the woods and he's trying to reconnect with his son. Um, you know, you can put Jackknife with De Niro and Ed Harris and this kind of the same kind of mini genre if you like. Uh, I am in the process of watching this one. Um, so that's Distant Thunder which is spine number 191. So again for a company that's relatively new on the scene um, they're almost up to 200 on the spine number. Again I'm not going to be complete and fortunately for my bank balance their last like two months worth of releases you know haven't really piqued my interest but again I'll see the odd one and maybe an eBay if I can get them cheap I'll pick them up but of course as my perhaps obsession with imprint <laughs> if you want to call it that um, is perhaps waning a little bit just as Radiance is appearing on the screen um, on the scene even um, and also the first two Radiance releases are absolutely wonderful again I don't get paid by imprint or Radiance or indicator, which is a shame really. Um, but anyway, that's my imprint collection. Who knows where it'll be in a year's time, but I don't think it'll be that much bigger. <coughs> so thanks very much for watching. Please let me know how many imprints you have and what your favourites are, or which imprint titles I should really try and pick up. And hopefully you'll join me again in the future. This is all to ruin. From Solitary Own Films, saying farewell.